Hey guys, what's going on? So it is a beautiful Thursday morning. Finished up the chores and had some breakfast. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make myself a cup of coffee and we're gonna get on to doing a couple things. I keep getting people asking about an office tour. I still wanna get a couple things done in here. It is done, but I'll have to do a complete tour sometime soon. Gotta get some things on the wall. Yeah, it's kinda a little bland in here. Although it's a pretty simple office, so it's not gonna be too exciting. So I got this part in yesterday. This is something for our Lily Juno feed pusher. So once we're ready to go, we're gonna take this out and put it on there. It's been a little bit of a pain here the last few days. Keep a little bit of raw milk from the tank in the fridge. So I guess I'll work on editing my last video until my dad shows up. Gonna need his help then. How's it going guys? So in my last video, if you remember, we were welding this salad shaver. All right, dad's here, so we're gonna go out and start working on this Lily Juno. So my dad's gonna take the skid loader. We're gonna need that to lift up the robot. And then got some tools. I'm not sure what we're gonna need to take the little bolts out. Starting to feel a little bit more like winter around here. It's below freezing this morning. It's a nice sunny day though. We've had this feed pushing robot for about three years now, I believe. And it's a pretty handy little guy. It does get a little bit frustrating though when it's not working. So some days it's like, why do we have this? But I think it's good for us to kind of learn how to problem solve and figure out stuff like this with technology because it's only gonna get more like this in the future. So first thing we're gonna do is lift it up. We gotta get concrete blocks for that. We're gonna have to lift it up and set it on a couple blocks so we can reach the sensor. So there's these metal strips on the floor of the barn that we have at each end to tell it where it's at. And it's supposed to sense that. And what's happening is it's not reading those and then it gets out of whack. The sensor that reads them is right here. Tried cleaning it off yesterday, it didn't do anything. So the next thing we're gonna do is replace it, see if that fixes the problem. I said one meter before it gets to these strips, it starts reading for them to see if they're there. And what was happening was as soon as it would get to that point where it was a meter from trying to read the strip, it was just assuming it was hitting it. So we think the sensor is telling it that it's always hitting the metal strip. So then what would happen is it would get to here, turn over towards the charger. Well, as soon as it would start coming this way to read that it was hitting the strip, it would just turn and start going towards the charger. And it would end up angling past it, missing the charging port right here running into this wall. It would stop short on the ends, but it would still kind of work. Get here and then it would miss the charger. We got this sensor, it's a $58 part. Hopefully that fixes the problem. So like this here thing is this way. So that was pretty simple. We replaced the sensor, reattached the wire there. Now I'm gonna set it up and we'll see if it works. Park it on the charger and then we'll start it up. I set it to run here in a minute. We'll see if it works. My confidence is not too strong right now, but we'll see. So I'm not gonna know if it's working until we get down to the end down there. 
See if it reads the metal strip properly. Yes, it could use a bath. I'm sure we'll get some comments about it. It's supposed to pass this strip, and the strip tells it how close it is to the end. Nope, it's not working. So it tries to read the strip once it gets to here, and it's supposed to read it, and then go another eight feet or something, but it's just cutting across right here, so that means what we did didn't work. We got it back on the blocks. We're gonna switch out the old sensor because that wasn't the issue. And they said we should try a new cord that goes from the box down to the sensor. So we're going to get one of those today. Let's try that. So my dad's going to get that part. And he's also going to take this heater along. We use this in the wintertime to heat the parlor up. So we'll toss this on the truck. Not a whole lot else to do right now. I guess I'll work in my office a little bit more. I'm gonna be milking this afternoon, so I'm gonna go have some lunch. It's about 11.45 right now. This afternoon around two, uh, truck's gonna be showing up to grind this hay. My dad's gonna start loading him. I think I'll probably work at that after I'm done milking, but we're gonna have to get the milking done first. It's about 12.15 now. I'm gonna get started with the afternoon milking. So my dad got this heater. It's like kind of a beast. It's got a fan up top there, I guess, and it'll force air out of here. Time to cow some milk. So I'm gonna get pen one over. First, I need to go around and sweep the feet in because our robot's not working yet. So my dad went to get that cord and they don't have one in stock. So we might have to wait till Monday till we get another one. It's Thursday right now, so that's not good. Let's go. Let's go, Breeze. So it might make you happier. Yeah. up the milking I'm closing the curtain here because it's getting cold out we got to keep the heat in the parlor and I'll go out here and see how far they're coming along with the hay chopping My dad's gonna finish up the hay chopping. They just need to do a few more bales. So we were thinking we should have another way to push in feed just in case our robot's not working because it's pretty annoying not having a second option. Uh, we used to actually have a lawnmower with a blade on it. We do actually have the lawnmower still, but it's not running. We're thinking it'd be nice to have something for on the skid loader. My dad was kind of working out an idea here. We have this old bucket that doesn't have much value to it. We were thinking we could just bolt a board on the front like this. Just something that if we need to push feed for a little bit, we could put on the skid loader and Save us a little bit of time. I'm gonna try and work on this a little bit, see if I can't rig something up. My dad had tossed a two by 10 here. I think we might wanna go a little taller. I went and got a two by 12. So one idea is duct tape. The other idea I had was uh, take this piece of angle iron, 
and we can bolt it to the board. That'll give us something we can weld into. We can weld this piece of metal here to the bucket and then one on that corner. I think that just might work. What do you think, Casey? Hay dust all over her face. Now we just gotta brace it to the bucket. Wanted to stick out a little bit this side because we don't wanna be driving right against the feed with our skid loader. This is the plan now. Just gonna weld this one here. This long pipe there and this piece of metal. Okay. Got it all welded together. The main thing is if we would tilt the bucket down and put the weight of the skid loader on this front part, it's gonna bend it. So we're gonna have to take it easy, make sure we take our time and don't put too much weight on the blade. But I think it'll work. I'll check back in with you guys then. I gotta go feed heifers. And then tonight I'll bring the camera along when we try to use it. So we'll see how it works. So it's 9.30 at night now. We're gonna go ahead and push in the feed. Usually either me or dad comes out at this time, just checks on the fresh cow pen, make sure we don't have any calves being born, and just push in a little bit of feed at the special needs pen right there. Usually we don't have to worry about pushing in out of the big barn, but tonight we do. Okay, so that worked pretty good for taking half hour to an hour to throw something together, so pretty happy. Cows are happy too. Today's Monday, it's been about three, four days since we had the breakdown. And we finally got the wire that we're gonna try and replace that goes from the control box down through the middle and down to that sensor down there. We're gonna have to try to fish it through the center. 602, she's kind of famous. She makes a lot of videos. Just tape it together. What are you doing, girl? There we go, it's going good. We couldn't reach inside to feel if the cord was damaged until now, until we pulled it out. And once I started pulling on it, I could feel there's a hole through the wire here. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a bad wire. I don't know if a mouse chewed it. So the other thing we're gonna do with the robot while we're working on it is I got a new set of wheels for it. So we have a lot of issues with it sliding around when we get humid weather or a lot of rain. The floors get kind of slick and it just, it loses traction and can't really work. It runs out of, off track, gets lost. So I wanted to try something different. So I got these wheels. These are not from the Lily company. These are actually made by a company called Claw Daddy. 
and they make airless tires for skid loaders and forklifts and stuff but i'm hoping that we can see some major improvements with these you can kind of see how aggressive these treads are we'll go ahead and pull the old wheels off getting pretty worn down here and starting to almost tear off we're kind of having trouble getting these tires off so we're going to go ahead and remove part of the side skirting here so we can get to them better Yeah, you can see this tire's wearing out. It's about to start falling apart. Yeah, Fair the size difference. So yeah, this should give us a nice improvement with these Call Daddy tires. One done, one to go. So we wanted to get it running right now, but the batteries are dead because it was sitting off the charger for the last four days. All right, guys, it is the next day now. So we got the robot charged up and it's running now and it's working. That cord was the issue. That's why it wasn't sensing those strips. And once I saw the old cord had that tear in it, I knew that was gonna work. I think it'll do a lot better with traction when we get that sticky weather and makes the concrete slick. So it's coming a few inches farther than it used to. It used to stop more like here. Now it comes up about this far. I believe there is a way in the settings you can adjust the wheel diameter. Might have to change that. It might work a little bit better. That'll be it for this video, guys. We'll see you later.